how does feed genomics work, right? I've, I've talked a lot about why feed optimization, what is feed optimization, we do feed optimization, but okay, so these are the building blocks. This is actually getting into how we actually do what, what, we're, uh, what we're talking about here. So this is a screenshot from our transformer section of our platform, and you can see we've, we've basically encoded what we're trying to do, right? So we kind of articulate it in English, and then we can encode it using these feed genomics transformers. So what it says here is if title not contains brand, in other words, if the brand's not in the title, and the category for this product is shoe, um, then put my brand in front of my title. Very simple transformer. All I'm doing is plugging my brand in in front of my title. Um, and I, the if is the criteria that I'm setting, and the then is the transformation that I'm affecting. And everything with the little hashtag that you're seeing, those are just comments. It's just basically, you know, often we'll be working on a feed for a, a long time, um, and then we want to make sure that the next person that comes along to support that feed has information about why we did what we did when we optimize it in the way that we did. So we'll leave this sort of trail of information for the next person um, that comes along, and that's what maybe those hashtags are. Then on the right-hand side, where it says Pinterest, Google Shopping, XML export, you can see that we were able to select which channels we want this one rule to apply to. So for any given rule, we can have it apply to all channels, one channel, or any number of specific channels in between. So in this example, maybe we, for whatever reason, only want to do this um, optimization for search and social channels, and we're leaving marketplaces out of the out of the um, the pool for right now. Just just an example, right? Um, in the in the sort of the the bottom of this box where it says modifying right below where it says then, I want you to just see modifying the current transformer field title will affect three dependent fields. This is getting a little bit technical, but it's important. I want you guys to see sort of how our analysts are thinking about this when they're going about building feeds. If they change this rule, <coughs> if they change this rule, um, it's going to affect the description. It's gonna affect whatever kind of alternate title they may be using for A-B testing, which I'll get into more in just a few minutes. And it's gonna affect um, one of the bullet point fields, which may be used by another export, right? And so we need to know that we're okay with that. And that, that's, this is so useful, the way all of these different sort of features and levers kind of interact within the platform. Our team's able to now use this to ensure that we're not disrupting any, anything over on the right-hand side by tweaking something on the left-hand side. And, and that can be tricky to do if you don't have these tools, right? So commonly what we see when we first talk to um, pr prospective clients is they've got like, an, maybe they've got an engineering team that's building feeds for these different channels. And a common narrative is I change something for one channel and I inadvertently mess something up on another channel, right? And that's what we're trying to avoid by creating this sort of, we're teasing apart all of these different streams of data so that we can manipulate something here without consequently negatively impacting something over here. Okay, yeah, and then the bottom half, you go ahead, Sean. Yeah. Yeah, don't mind, I'll just keep just jumping in. The other piece is that your products and your prices and your availability are changing all the time. And so there's no such thing, the historical premise was a set it and forget it approach. And that's not going to work if you have a dynamic data set where you're adding new products, you're changing prices, you have promotions during periods of time, you have promotions for certain channels and not for others, you have promotions during a certain period of time up to and including hours. And so if you start expanding on like all the things you do from a performance marketing perspective, it all is facilitated through Feedonomics. And even though this is a rudimentary um, transformer, the concept is if you can think of it in English, we're able to do it in Feedonomics at a level of scale that really is, it's impossible to do if you're trying to do it with any other mechanism. Thousands of products, uh, multiple channels, and multiple countries and languages. So as you start layering on, as this gets more complex, it's all done within this platform. Yeah, and, and just, just to add to that, to give folks a frame of reference, this is one transformer, right? But one client could have anywhere from 150 transformers on the low end applied to their feed to several thousand or you know, upward of 10,000 in some cases. So depending on the, the number of SKUs, 
how many different product categories does this merchant traverse, right? If they're all shoes, then there's only so many rules we're probably going to apply. Um, but if they're in electronics and, you know, the big box retailers that might be selling every type of um, product under the sun, the more categories there are, the more diverse your products are, the more need there are for all of these different transformers to sort of isolate and optimize these different product subsets. So um, there's a lot, and it's obviously not just title. In this example, we're focused on title. That tends to be the most important in terms of driving relevancy, but there's category, there's product type, there's Google product category, there are all the meta attributes like size and color and material. And so any one of these fields might have many optimization rules applied. And then there are the performance oriented variables like Sean was alluding to. With your, when you talk about your custom labels, um, they're very versatile. And so one of the things that we might optimize into the feed here are custom labels that allow you to segment your data into different groups so that when you're handling the bids, uh, you can you can effectively modulate your bids based on the way your products are grouped. That can be difficult to do if you don't have that granularity in the structure of your feed. So I often say when I'm talking to, to potential clients that we become like your digital marketing agency's best friend or your PPC, whoever is doing the PPC, whether it's in-house or through an agency, it doesn't matter. We become their best friend because now they have at their fingertips the ability to manage all of these data transformations so that they can basically act, truly run a fully optimized campaign, right? The campaign has to sit on top of, uh, on top of the feed. So all, all of that comes together um, here. Um, okay, on the bottom, in the bottom section, last thing I want to touch on in this slide, just that within the platform, you can preview what your data uh, will look like out on the channel that you're sending to, right? So in the bottom left, this is a preview of what the data is going to look like on Google Shopping. On the right, you've got a preview of what the data is going to look like on Amazon. So it's useful because when our team's building out your feeds, they're optimizing the data. They want to be able to click a button and say, okay, that's what this will look like. I'm paying attention to what the end ad um, how the end ad will present out on the channel. So these, again, these are some of the tools that our team's using built into the platform.